In this lecture, we are going to learn how to handle the exception when our NestJS application is not able to fetch data from the database. So if I go to VS Code and here, let me open the source folder. In there, let's go to this users folder. And in there, we have this usercontroller.ts. And there, we have an endpoint where when we make a get request to this URL, it is going to return us all the users from the database. And for that, we are calling this get all users method of this user service. So let me open user service.ts file. Here we have that get all users method. And this get all users method is responsible for fetching all the users from the database. So if I go to Postman and from here, if I make a get request to this URL, it should return us all the users from the database. Currently in the database, we have only one user with user ID 11. So the details of that user should be fetched and it should be received in the response. If I make this request, you'll see that is what happening. Now what I will do is our NestJS application is currently running and it is connected to our database. Now I'll go to the services and from there, I'll stop this service, which is running the PostgreSQL database. And when we stop this service, we will not be able to connect to or work with PostgreSQL database. So here, let me stop it. So the service for this PostgreSQL, which is running in the background, it is stopped. And now when we try to fetch the data from PostgreSQL database, since its service is stopped, it is not running. We should not be able to perform any operation on the PostgreSQL database. And that's why now when I make a request from the postman and before that, let me show you that our application is still running. We do not have any errors here. And now if I go to the postman and try to fetch the data from PostgreSQL database from the users table, you see, we are getting this type of error. It says 500 internal server error. But here we know that the problem is because our database server is not running and our NestJS application is not able to connect to the database. Right. So we are going to handle this exception and we are going to throw a meaningful error message to the user so that the user will understand what is the problem. And for that, let's go back to services first and let me start the service so that when we will rebuild our NestJS application, it will build successfully. And now let's go to VS Code. And there, the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to write a try catch block. Now, using try catch block, what we can do is any code which we know that it can throw an exception, we can write it inside the try block. So I'm going to write this code inside the try block. And whenever this code will throw an exception, we are going to catch that exception inside this catch block. Okay, so if this code, if it throws any exception, we are going to receive an error object for this catch block. This error object is going to contain the exception details which has occurred. And inside this catch block, we can handle that exception in whatever way we want. Here, what I'll do is, whenever an exception will occur that exception will be caught by this catch block so i simply want to return that exception error in the response and for that i can say return error this error here it is going to store the error object which has occurred with this let's save the changes so now if i go to postman and if i make this request again currently our application is connected to the database so it should fetch all the users from the database. As you can see in the response, we have received all the users from the database. Now I'll again go back and stop this PostgreSQL service. And when we are stopping it again, the PostgreSQL service is stopped and we should not be able to connect or fetch data from the PostgreSQL database. And now if we make a request to the same URL, we are still getting 500 internal server error and that's because let me start the service first. Let's go back to VS code. And this is happening because this try catch block will only work for async methods. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this method as public async. 
and this find method it also runs asynchronously as you can see it is returning us a promise so we will wait for that promise to resolve so for that i'm going to use this await keyword in front of that okay and now let's save the changes and let's see if the application is built or not so the application is now built let me stop this service again and let's go back to postman and now if i make the request you see now in the response we are receiving the error object so basically here an exception occurred and that exception was caught by this catch block and from this catch block we are simply returning the error object so that error object has been returned in the response and you can see the error number the code for the error so here the error is e connection refused basically here the application was not able to connect to the database so there was a timeout error so in such cases what we can do is we can throw an exception and the exception which we might want to throw here is let's go to built-in http exceptions so in such cases we might want to throw this request timeout exception and that's what we are going to do here so let me start the service first let's go to vs code and from here instead of returning the error also if i go back to postman you will see that even though we have received an error object in the response the status code is 200 okay but here since the connection was not established with the database we should have received 408 status code so what we can do is here we can return or actually we can throw a new exception so here i'm going to throw a new exception and the exception name is request timeout so here i'm going to throw request timeout exception and here i'm going to specify an error message and for the error message let's say an error has occurred please try again later okay let's save the changes let's go back to terminal so the application is building successfully let me again stop the database service and now let's go to postman and from here if i make the request again now you see the status code is 408 request timed out and in the message we can see an error has occurred please try again later and the error description is request timeout so here we can also change this error description so let me again restart the service first let's go back to postman and here what we can do is as a second argument we can pass an object and in there we can set the description and here let's say the description is could not connect to database okay so this will be the description let me save the changes let's see if the application is built so the application is built let's go back to the service and let's stop this postgresql service one more time and now if we go to postman and if i make the request again you see we are getting this 408 request timeout and now you will see that the error description has changed it says could not connect to database so in this way whenever our nestjs application is not able to connect to database for any reason we might want to show a 408 status code in the response and we might want to show a meaningful error message to the end user so from here the user will come to know that there is some problem in connecting to the database right so in this lecture we learned how to handle database connection exception by throwing a request timeout exception from the code and this you might want to do for all these methods which is going to connect to the database and fetch or create some record in the database so for all these methods we need to add a try catch block and we need to throw a request timeout exception if the application is not able to connect to the database this is all from this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it
Thank you for listening and have a great day.